All right, looking at section 9.1 today, day two, so the second part of our section where we're going to really look at how to graph out a sequence on our graphing calculator, and then what is the limit of the sequence. So we'll discuss those two main topics by the end of the day, um, or the end of the lecture. You should know how to operate that calculator and what it means to take the limit of a sequence. So um, the first question it asks us, or the first example here says, use the graphing calculator, put it in sequence mode, and then we're going to graph this recursively defined sequence where our starter value is b sub 1 equals 4, and here is our rule for the sequence. And we notice right here that shows us that is this is going to be a recursive rule, isn't it? And then it says for all n greater than or equal to 2. So we're going to set up our, our graphing calculator and put it in the mode, and we want dot mode. So I want sequence mode and dot mode. So grab your graphing calculator. If you have to, hit pause. And I'm going to go to the mode key. And if you come down just a little ways, yours is probably sitting in function like mine was. That's like our f of x type normal operation mode. Come all the way over to the right and you see SEQ, that stands for sequence. So hit enter to select that. It's Mine was on thick for, for, print, uh, for printout or the graphing model. So I wanna, I'm going to go dot thick. Some calculators may just have dot as their option. Others might have the dot thick. So if we get those two set up, that'd be great. Go ahead and go to your home key. I just did that by second mode. It quits it and brings me back to the home screen. Um, if we hit our Y equals key, this is where we're going to enter the rules of sequence. I'm going to try setting this at Y, uh, a U min of 2, or the N min, I'm sorry, the N minimum value of 2, and then um, our rule of sequence is what goes in here, and I want it to be the recursive term. So I am going to go that it is second 7, so I can grab the u function, and I want the u function of the um, n minus 1 term. So if I hit the x key, it actually produces an n because, as you can see, it goes x, t, theta, n for those different modes of the calculator. So x is function mode, t is parametric mode, theta is polar mode, and n stands for sequence mode. So I've got n minus 1, and then I need to add 2 to it because I'm just, remember, I'm following the rule of sequence there. And my starter value was a 4, so I'm going to put that as 4. And now if I hit graph, oh, I have, I need to go look at my window. My n min value is 2, my max is 50. Maybe I'll slide that back. Maybe I'll go to 15 and oh, x max of 50. I really only need 15 to match up with the n values that I'm going to go through. And my y min Negative 2 is probably fine because I think all of these are going to be positive, but maybe I'll go up to 20 for my y max. Now if I hit graph, ah, there they are. Now it did not print out, I noticed, my very first term, the 4. So I'm going to go back over to the y value, and let's put in the first term being the u min being 1. So that probably, oh, that makes sense. So the u of 1, the u of first term was equal to 4. That will make sense. Now we should get that to plot. Yes, there we got it to plot out. So if I just swipe this over, um, you can see here when n equals 1, we got 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our, our value of 4, right? And it looks like it's a linear function, which kind of makes sense because we're just adding 2 to the previous number. And that is, you know, using your calculator, you get this nice linear pattern. If we had it on thick, we would have just probably gotten the line. All right, so some facts. We will prim be primarily interested in what happens to the sequence as we get to large values of n. So for that previous one, we know it would have just kept climbing and climbing by, by values of 2 each time. So where would that be headed? Well, that sequence would be headed to infinity. So here is, 
you know, the braces tell me, get ready, this is some sort of rule of sequence here. And be, let A sub N be a sequence of real numbers. The possibilities of outcomes, if I'm looking at a limit as it goes to infinity, well, there's, there's really four possibilities. One is our sequence could head to infinity, much like that dot one did that we just looked at. It was climbing by twos and would just keep climbing forever. Another possibility is it could go to negative infinity. Sometimes maybe our sequence will come down and ride out along kind of like a horizontal asymptote. So it will reach some value, some height value of C. So we would say then that that converges to C. If I go to infinity and I get oscillation between two fixed numbers, maybe my pattern is it's coming out as positive and negative three. Yeah, we can write sequences that would do that. So maybe I have positive three, negative three, positive three, negative three. Well, is this thing converging to any one number? No, it's not. So we will say it diverges and it diverges by oscillation. So you've got diverges to infinity, diverges to negative infinity, converges if we can actually name a limit. Find the limit of the sequence. Here's example one, and it says consider the following graph of the sequence. Does it appear to have a limit? Well, this one to me does look like it is settling down, and it actually looks like it's settling down about the height of one, doesn't it? So I would say yes in this case. I do have a limit, and and I didn't erase the answers from the previous hour when I taught this, but I would say this thing is converging to one, and then that would be known as a convergent sequence. So it converges. Here was the rule of sequence, and as I analyze this, we can see as as we put one in, we'd have one plus one over one. Okay, that gives me two. Put two in, now I'm adding a half, I get one and a half. Put three in, now I have one plus a third. Put in a hundred, and now I have one plus one hundred, so one one hundred. So I'd have one point zero one. And as this grows, maybe a thousand, and then I'd have one point zero zero one. If I go ten thousand, one point zero zero one, and you can see how that is approaching one. I could show this has a limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n. And if I put in infinity in here, right, think of a large number, 1 divided by large, this would tend to go to 0. And I could see that that limit is 1 indeed. Algebraically, we can talk about that. Um, consider the following graph of the sequence. So I have 1 plus 2n as my rule of sequence. And what's going to happen? It says list out the first few terms. Okay, so let's start with a sub 1. If I put 1 in, I get 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. If I go to my next term, I'd be putting in times 2, so that's 4 plus 1 is 5. Oh, and if I put 3 in, I got 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. Looks like we're picking up a pattern of odd numbers, doesn't it? Will this thing eventually settle down? No, because each time it's adding um, bigger and bigger values, right? Um, so this sequence does not have a limit. It's going to infinity because these numbers are growing. And this se sequence, we could say it is divergent. And in this case, we were always increasing. So we would know this as a monotonic function. And there's a picture. Not get it out of the right. And we can see our very first term started off as 3. As we hit 5, we were at that 11 still. So. Um, this one, let's just erase. Now, consider the following sequence. Does it appear to have a limit? Um, I get suspicious when I see this because this would be an alternating pattern of positive and negative values. So let's just do out our first few terms again, a sub 1. I would have a 1, a 1, and a 1. So that would be negative 1. But this goes to 0, and negative 1 times 0 would be 0 divided by 1, so I get 0 for that particular term. Let's go to a sub 2. n is now 2. 
and this would give me a positive value here. 2 minus 1 would be 1, so I'd have 1 over 2, so I have 1 half for my next term. Put in 3. 3, this is going to turn to a negative. 3 minus 1 is a 2, so I'm going to end up with negative 2 over 3. And now you kind of pick up the pattern. It's going to be positive. Um, 3 over 4, negative 4 over 5, negative 5, positive 5 over 6, negative 7 over 8. It appears that they are getting closer to 1 and negative 1, doesn't it? I would have to say that this is not does not have a limit because of the positive negative op alterations and this is driving towards one and this is driving towards negative one so this sequence is divergent now could I put that in my calculator absolutely so let's try it um, it is not a rule of recursion, is it? There's no recursive nature to this when it doesn't say use the previous term of the sequence. So let's just go to our y equals. I'm going to clear out my pattern there and this. I don't have a starter value, which is fine, but I do have, um, oops, let me hit back here. This one doesn't work quite like my other calculator. Let's, I'm just going to build a fraction so you can see what I have on top and what I have on bottom. Negative 1 raised to the n. Oops, didn't raise up. Raised to the n. And then multiply it by n minus 1. On the denominator, just fits the value of n. And like I said, we are not, we do not have a starter value because this is not a recursive one. And let's just go graph. Ooh, there we can see the one negative one, one negative one. I'm going to hit my window a little bit and make that spread a little bit wider on my y values. This should just be two, shouldn't it? Not 22. All right, now we'll graph it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can see how it rides along one and negative one. 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. And as the terms keep piling on, it keeps oscillating. This one. Um, so our function is a sub n equals 3n minus 2, that quantity divided by n minus 1. Does it have a limit? Will it converge or diverge? So the theorem kind of the technical explanation of what we're going to do is we are going to look at the limit as we head to infinity. We want to find out if it has a limit. If it has a limit, then it is uh, convergent, isn't it? So if we can get to a number, we know our limit will, our, our function, our sequence will converge. Um, so take your sequence and it says convert it or write it as a function. It says let f of n, the function of n, equal to the sequence or the rule of sequence. If f of x exists for every real number x greater than 1, then we can talk about the limit of it. So technically, we can take limits of functions, but we can't take limits of sequences. So we convert that rule of sequence to a function. And then we can work with it. So I'm saying as x heads to infinity, I've got 3x minus 2 over x minus 1. Well, the degrees are the same. We're headed to infinity. So we know kind of the rules of how to find that limit. It would be it goes to 3. If I had to prove it formally, I could say, well, let's divide every term by the highest term in the bottom, which is x to the first. And we could see this would go to 0. This would go to 1. This is going to 0. And this is going to 3. Add them up, and I have 3 over 1, which is 3, just as we thought. Now it says the limit as f of x goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, is L. Then we can say, well, then the, the, the rule of sequence can be thought of as the same. It goes to L, which in this case is 3. So yes, indeed, this does have a limit. It's 3. That means our sequence is converging. It's convergent. Another example. Ln of 
n over 5n is our rule of sequence. We think of this as a function. We write it in function notation. Now, how do I take that? Well, I know that the limit as x goes to infinity of natural log x is infinity, and the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x would also go to infinity. Oh, this is the infinity over infinity case. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule and take the derivative of each the top and the bottom. Well, the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. If I let that go to infinity, I'd have 1 over infinity in a, in a sense, and that means that limit is 0. The other one, the limit as x goes to infinity of 5 times x, well, this would go to infinity, wouldn't it? Oh, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. L'Hopital's. The derivative is 5. There we go. So as I head to infinity, this becomes 5. So this limit um, I can think of as 0 divided by 5, which is indeed 0. So it does have a limit value, doesn't it? Our limit value is 0, and that means this is convergent. Do these sequences converge or diverge? So we're just going to use the same techniques, and that will wrap it up. What do we got? Six examples. All right, so I want the limit as n. You can use n if you want. goes to infinity. I'm thinking of this written in function form, though. And it's just the first one that's over 5. OK. Well, if I go to infinity, I can see very clearly that this is going to go to infinity. So I know that this function goes to infinity, which means it's divergent. The next one, hmm. You know what I might try to do on this one? Is list out my terms. I'm just going to get a feel for this. So I'm going to list each term, starting with n equals 1. If I put 1 in, I'd have negative 1 plus 2. Oh, plus negative 2. So when n equals 1, I've got negative 3. When n equals 2, if this is 2, this is even. So this becomes 1. Negative 2 plus 1 makes this negative 1. And then I have 3 when n equals 3. What's our next term? Well, this would be negative 1 plus a negative 2. So we've got negative 3. And I think you can see where this is going. I'm back to even. So a positive negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And we really pick up the oscillating nature, don't we? So this would be oscillating. So it's divergent. The next one, we could list out some terms, but I think I want to do a comparison. So I'm going to do a limit as n goes to infinity of 8n over e to the 3n plus 1. Well, individually, each of those limits go to 0, don't they? So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say the limit as n goes to infinity of 8 to the n, and the limit as n goes to infinity of this, I would get infinity on this top, and I would get infinity on the bottom, wouldn't I? So it's an infinity over infinity case. So let's use the L'Hopital on the top. The limit as n goes to infinity of the derivative would be 8. OK, that gives me 8 for the top limit as we head to infinity. So n goes to infinity of 3e to the 3n would be my derivative, because I'm using L'Hopital's. Going, putting infinity in, oh, we're headed to infinity. Now that I compare this, let's think of this back as the limit as n goes to infinity of 8n over e to the 3n plus 1. This would be 8 divided by infinity, and that would go to 0. Oh, interesting. So the limit 0, this would be, not divergent, it's convergent. Oh, if you think about back to what we did the other day when we talked about rates of growth, this 
if this is headed to zero, that means my bottom is growing faster, doesn't it? And indeed, e to the 3n would definitely grow faster than the linear 8n function, wouldn't it? Next, let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity. This is one of those we've learned to compare the ratio of the highest degrees if they are equal degrees, and in this case, I've got cube and cube, so they are the same degree, I know that this will turn out to be 7 over 4. To prove it very easily, if I divide it by n cubed on each term, then this is going to 0, this is going to 0, this is going to 4, and this went to 7 and we get the 7 fourths. So since it approaches a limit, it has that L value, this is a convergent sequence. Um, also means they grow, yeah, it's convergent. We'll leave it at that. Um, let's list out a few terms. I'm a little suspicious with the negative about an alternator because I have N that's going to go from odd and even back and forth. So if we let n be 1, I would have negative 3 fifths. If I have n being 2, I'm going to have 9 20 fifths, square both. If we let n go to 3, negative 27 over 125. Oh, this is interesting. If I go to 4, I would have what? 81 positive 625. This is getting smaller and smaller, isn't it? So it's like this is bouncing back and forth, but yet it's going to be converging on the x-axis. It's going to be headed to zero, isn't it? Where the bottom is growing more quickly than the top, so it is headed to the zero. The limit as n goes to infinity of negative 3 over 5 to the n power. I wonder if it's going to infinity or to zero. Maybe it's not quite going to zero. This is a ratio, isn't it? This is an r value. Interesting. I've got an r of negative three fifths. This is a geometric ratio. Each time I'm multiplying by three negative three fifths. To get to the next term, I multiply by negative three fifths. That's a geometric sequence. So there's a special theorem about that. It says if you have an r value, which we do, and if our absolute value of r is less than one, then this is going to zero. Okay, so we were right, weren't we? Our gut feel was right on this. Because our r value, the absolute value of our r, would be equal to negative three-fifths absolute valued, and I know that that's less than one, then that implies that our limit is going to zero. Okay, shouldn't extend that like that. Our limit is going to zero as n goes to infinity, okay, of negative three-fifths to the n would equal zero, which means this is convergent. It oscillates, yes, but it is hovering over the x-axis, the y equals zero line. What about 101 raised to the n? Is that going to continue to grow? Well, what it means is each time I'm really multiplying by 1.01, aren't I? And that's going to continue to get smaller and smaller. Seems like it's getting closer to 1, but is it? Well, this is an R value that's greater than 1. So I've got the absolute value of R, which is equal to 1.01. That is greater than N1. And so for that reason, this is actually going to go to infinity. So the limit as N goes to infinity of 1.01 raised to the N it goes to infinity, therefore we could say this is going to be divergent sequence. It's going to get larger and larger and larger.
That is the end of it. It takes you to your homework. I think a lot of them will be fast. Determine whether the leak, uh, the convergence and divergence of it. Um, most of them I would just check out by letting your sequence, your end value go to infinity, and then do an analysis of what that means to your function there. And here we've got the highest degree of is one on the bottom, one on the top. So I know this is going to three. That means it is not conver uh, divergent, it's convergent, okay? So use those rules and you should be okay. You can use your calculator some too if you want to graph those out. Have a great day.